Welcome to the DotCast. Today, Ricky Kittler chats with top Washington Nationals pitching prospect and current Syracuse chief starter, Eric Fetty. Thanks for taking the time to talk with me. I appreciate it. No problem. Uh, so the first question I wanted to ask you about uh, being drafted in the first round back in 2014, what was your draft day experience like? Um, it was, uh, I would say, it was pretty unique. I was uh, sitting on the couch with my family fresh off Tommy John, so I was in a, a cast and uh, pretty drugged up. So it was one that, you know, it's a little blurry, but uh, it was, a, you know, a special day, one that I'll always remember. And, you know, it was just a great feeling to get taken in the first round with all my family and friends around. When you were growing up, who were some of your favorite pitchers that you enjoyed watching? Um, I was a big Diamondbacks fan growing up, and they had, uh, you know, Kurt Schilling and Randy Johnson there when they were pretty good, so those two were probably my favorite. Do you feel like that you, I wouldn't say you emulate your stuff after those two guys, but is there any pitcher that you kind of emulate from? Uh, well, you know, just getting to pro ball and kind of seeing how my stuff plays, you know, I like to try to throw kind of like Derek Lowe, you know, big sinker ball guy, lots of ground balls, and yeah, he's somebody that I enjoy watching, or enjoyed watching. Now, this year you got to take part in your first Major League Spring Training. What did you take away from that experience? Uh, it was, uh, you know, it was a, a wonderful experience, and, you know, I got to talk with a lot of guys on our staff that have been around and been successful in the big leagues, you know, just got to pick their brain and, you know, it was a uh, experience where I got to, you know, see how I, how my stuff played at the highest level. And, you know, it was a, a confidence booster and, you know, just an experience that, you know, that helped me build uh, for the future. We always hear Dusty Baker talk about how, he wants his pitchers to watch what Max Scherzer does. When you watch him pitch and you see the run that he's on now for the big league club, what can you learn from what Scherzer's doing right now? Well, I mean, he's something special, but, you know, every time he's on the mound, you can tell that, you know, he's going to attack hitters and he, uh, you know, he fears nobody and, you know, he, you can tell he wants the ball. And, you know, that's one of the biggest things. You know, as a pitcher, is just being aggressive and trusting your stuff, and I think he's one of the best at in the game. Obviously, he has amazing, amazing stuff, and uh, you know, it's you know, he's just a fun guy to watch, and you know, it's, I mean, everything he does, I mean, it'd be something you'd want to learn from. Because, I mean, he's arguably one of the, best, if not the best in the game. Now, in most publications, you're viewed as one of the Nats' top prospects. Do you feel more pressure to perform? Knowing how high that people view you, or are you, or is it just something you you take with you to the mound and go start by start? Um, if anything, it, you know, it, I don't view it as pressure. I view it as you know, as a confidence booster when you're out there on the mound. You know that people believe you're something special, and that you know you should perform at that level. Whether you, I mean, it's just, yeah, it gives me confidence more than pressure. It's been a, a crazy year for you going from the rotation to the bullpen, now back to the rotation. I want to go back first to when you were in the bullpen with Harrisburg and for a little while at Syracuse. What was the toughest part about switching roles for you? Um, it was probably the ability to get, you know, hot at any moment. I've been used to having my, you know, full pregame routine. I have my whole day set, my whole five-day rotation set. Um, and then now, you know, I could get hot back-to-back -back days or, you know, maybe not throw for five or six days if they didn't beat me. And that was for sure the biggest thing is, you know, maybe the game out of nowhere could take a turn and I'd have to be hot and be ready for, you know, a batter and, you know, and two hitters. So that was probably the, the toughest adjustment for me. Who are some of the people that helped you adjust to that new role? Oh, well, uh, you know, right away, um, my, my best friend, um, from back home, he's previously done this with the Pirates organization, uh, Buddy Board, and, and you know I called him right away and kind of seen how he uh, you know adjusted his routine, and then you know lots of the guys in the the Nats bullpen helped me out as well, um, with just you know talking to them and you know giving me small advice on you know how to prepare myself. When you look at the talent that you guys have had out in the bullpen with 
Chiefs, uh, it seems like the three of you, Austin Adams and Wander Suero, have sort of been a good trio of guys when you were in the bullpen. What can you say about the seasons that both of those guys are having? Uh, they've been unbelievable. I mean, Austin has, uh, you know, just amazing stuff, and he's been, you know, striking out guys like crazy, and Suero has been one of the hottest pitchers I've ever seen. I mean, he's got, you know, great stuff as well, and he's been absolutely dominant. It's been, you know, just a pleasure to sit in there and watch those two, uh, you know, show us how it's done. Now, when you have a, a rough outing like you did Monday against Buffalo, do you go back and look a lot at that tape, or is it something you just forget about and move on to the next game? Uh, in a situation like that one, that's one where I just want to put it in the past and leave it there. I think uh, you know, if you look too much into it, it's going to eat you alive. You know, if things continue to go bad after three or four starts, I feel like that's something that, you know, then you go back and look at film. But, you know, it's just one where, you know, things didn't go as planned, and, you know, it's, you flush it and right back out there. So how long do you take? Do you think it will take you to now? You talked about with the bullpen going to a different routine. Does it take a little bit quicker to adjust back to the starter routine that you had? Um, I don't know. This is, my, I mean, my first time doing it, so we'll see how it goes. But, you know, I, I know my routine from, you know, starting for the past 10 years. So, you know, it was something I jumped right back into um, before my first start again on Monday. And then, um, I don't know, I think it won't be too tough of an adjustment. It's just, you know, something that... You know, just give it a little time, and then it should be right back to normal. How closely do you guys follow what the big league club is doing and the success that they've been having? I mean, the games are always on in our clubhouse. Uh, you know, a lot of the guys, especially at the AAA level, have been there or really close with a lot of the guys, you know. Um, it's fun to root for all of them, you know, spending time in the clubhouse with them in big league spring training. and. No, it's it's pretty amazing to see what they're doing, and it's a fun, it's fun to follow and watch them. Especially when you when you were in the bullpen, you you sort of see the struggles that they're that they've been having this season. Do, do the do you guys view that as sort of hey, this could be our opportunity to make it to the big leagues? And how do you how did you guys view that when watching what the bullpen was doing? Yeah, well, I mean, that's the tough part about this business is, you know, you want to get to the big leagues, but a lot of those guys are our friends and people we want to see be successful. And, you know, if uh, you know, if this club ever called us up, we'd be ecstatic. But at the time, you know, being down here and those guys being in the show, I want them to be successful and win games because, I mean, there's nothing better than watching our team win up there. So, you know, I'm rooting for them. And just when I get my chance, you know, I'll try to take full advantage of it. And last question for you, for any Nationals fans that are listening uh, to this interview, what's the message you want to send to them? Um, well, I, just, I guess the team is, you know, at a great point in the year, and I, I expect them to continue this. So, you know, I hope that you know I can get up there and help this team win a World Series at some point this year. Eric, again, thanks for taking the time. Uh, best of luck going forward, and uh, we'll, I'm sure we'll talk again soon. Thanks again. Yeah, thanks for having me. We'd like to thank Eric Fetty for spending a few minutes with us. You can follow the Dodcast and District on Deck on Twitter at District on Deck. Uh, you can give this video a like and subscribe on YouTube. We do these interviews periodically and every post game, a live show. Give us a like on Facebook and of course read us on districtondeck.com.